Today we're talking about the Triangle Proportionality Theorem. And before we get started, you need to already know what similar figures are and how their side lengths are proportional. If you don't know about similar figures yet, the rest of this won't make a ton of sense to you, so I recommend you go back and look at that first. So today we're going to take triangle ABC, and we're going to add a couple of points to this triangle. We're going to add a point D that's on somewhere on side AB, it doesn't matter where, and a point E that's somewhere on side AC. We're also going to take the time to connect those two points with a segment. And here's the key to triangle proportionality. Segment DE needs to be parallel to segment BC. Regardless of where D and E are on those sides, those segments need to be parallel for this to work. We use this a little bit already with triangle mid segments. The difference here is that uh, D and E are not necessarily the midpoints of their respective sides. Well, first of all, this is going to create two similar triangles. We have triangle ADE and triangle ABC that are now similar by AA. Notice that I have a couple of parallel lines, so I have some corresponding angles going on. They also share angle A. So by the angle-angle theorem, these are similar triangles. That means the corresponding angle measures are equal, of course, and corresponding side lengths are proportional. That's kind of the background of what's happening with us here, but today we're going to set up a different kind of proportion that this also creates, and this is what the triangle proportionality theorem is all about. We're going to take those two smaller sections, right? Because these are similar triangles, I know that AE over AC is equal to AD over AB, right? Is equal is also equal to DE over BC. That's just from our similar triangle proportions. But today we're going to use those smaller sections. I'm going to take AE and EC that were created when we put point E on that side, and AD and DB that were created when we put point D on that side, and put those into a proportion. So AE over EC is equal to AD over DB. Notice that on one side I put the longer section over the smaller section, and on the other side of my proportion, I also put the ratio the longer side over the shorter side, or the longer segment over the smaller segment. This is not the only way to write this proportion. There's a whole bunch of different ways. There's actually eight different ways that I can write that proportion. This is only one of them, but we need to remember to keep corresponding parts in corresponding places. If I put long over short, then on the other side, the other ratio also needs to be long over short. If I put short over long, the other side needs to be short over long, and so on. So let's set up an actual problem and give this a try. Here I've got um, four of our segments, right, the segments we were just talking about. I have measures for three out of the four, but one of the measures is missing. So we're going to find that missing uh, segment length. First of all, we're going to set it up in our proportion 6 over 3 long over short is equal to x over 4 long over short. Now, there's more than one way to solve this proportion as well. I, you probably noticed already 6 over 3 is equal to 2. I need to make that same ratio on the other side. What over 4 is equal to 2? So you probably already know what x is going to be, but let's use cross products this time uh, to solve for x. So I'm going to multiply one diagonal and get 3x. Multiplying the other diagonal, 6 times 4 is 24. So now I have an equation that I can solve. Dividing both sides by 3, I get x equals 8. 
Now, just a reminder that geometry can be very precise and very picky. If I was asked to solve for x, I would be done. However, since I said we're going to find the missing side length or segment length, I need to take this one step further with my notation. I'm not just going to say x equals 8. I'm going to say segment AD is equal to 8, or the measure of segment AD equals 8. Remembering that when I'm talking about segment length, I don't put the line over the top of AD. I don't know why it says DE right there. I think I was working with a different problem, but that's okay. All right, now let's take triangle JKL. And we're going to put some extra points on here. We're going to split JK and put uh, a point Q on that segment. And I'm going to put point P on side KL. So that when I, of course, um, when I connect those points, I'm going to create two parallel lines. QP is going to be parallel. I don't know why that's not showing up. This is just great today. Let's maybe, there we go. QP is parallel to JL. That's going to create our proportional segments. Let's put in some measures. And let's say that we want to find uh, the length of KQ. That's our missing length. This time we're going to throw in a little bit more algebra. So setting up our proportion, we're going to say x plus 4 over 10 equals 12 over 15. Those are our corresponding uh, side lengths. Remember, that's not the only way to write it. I could put 10 over x plus 4 equals 15 over 12. I could even put x plus 4 over 12 equals 10 over 15. There's a whole bunch of different ways to write this. But now that we have our proportion written, let's use some cross products. Before I do that, I know that you know, multiplying x plus 4 times 15 gives us some bigger numbers, which is not a problem since we have calculators at our disposal. However, if there's any fractions you can reduce, you can if you want to before you even get started, so you're not working with quite such big numbers. 12 over 15, when I divide both those numbers by 3, reduces to 4 fifths, and I can use 4 fifths in my problem. So now when I do cross products, I get x plus 4 times 5 and 10 times 4. Remembering to distribute the 5, I actually have 5x plus 20 on the left-hand side. And 10 times 4, of course, is 40. Then I would subtract 20 from both sides and divide both sides by 5. And I end up with x equals 4. If I had not reduced this fraction in the first step, I still would have gotten x equals 4. So either way, you're going to come out with the same thing. Now, if I was asked to solve for x, of course we'd be done. But I wasn't asked to just solve for x. I was asked to find kq. That means the length from k to q. Since x is 4, we're going to take just a second and plug that back in for x to find our missing length. So 4 plus 4 means that kq is going to have a length of 8. Just a couple of things to watch out for. Sometimes they're a little bit tricky in how they draw the diagrams. Um, this time they still gave us a missing side length, but that they didn't give us all four segments that we need to set up our proportion. They gave us three of the segments we need and said that this entire length over here is 25. Remember, it's not the entire length that I need, but this little segment length. To find the segment length that I need, I'm simply going to, uh, I can reason this out, of course, right? If the whole thing is 25, and I already have 10 of that, I'm missing 15. Or I can say 25 minus 10 is 15 and find the missing length that I need 
to be able to set up my proportion. The other thing to, to know is that let's say I don't know those sides are parallel. Sometimes they'll ask you to verify that those uh, side lengths are parallel or segments are parallel. And if you have a proportion that's equal, then you can say those lengths are parallel or those segments are parallel. Anyway, just a couple of things to watch out for moving forward. We're going to wrap it up for today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you next time.